People have been asking us to do more coverage on Tulsi Gabbard, so here we go. We're all over the 2020 Democratic presidential race this week on Special Report. Monday, of course, we hosted that live town hall with Senator Bernie Sanders. You know he's going to remember that town hall for a while. Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard joins us live from Fort Madison, Iowa. Congresswoman, thanks for being here. Aloha, Brett. It's good to talk to you. You, I want to start with the breaking news, and I don't know if you heard it earlier in the broadcast. Uh, it appears that a missile has been fired at North Korea, some sort of tactical guided missile. It's not confirmed by the Pentagon or the administration yet, but they're citing South Korean news agencies. Wasn't Fox going on and on for months about how amazing Trump is at foreign diplomacy and how he got North Korea to stop launching missiles? and agencies over there. That would mean, if true, that 591 days have passed since the last missile was fired. You're on House Armed Services. Uh, your thoughts, if that turns out to be the case? Uh, well, look, Brett, obviously we need to determine the facts and get the details of, of what has actually happened here. But I think it's important to address the larger issue, which is that we still need to continue to pursue our efforts with negotiations with North Korea to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula and end, finally bring about an end to the Korean War. I think in this connection, it is also important to note why it is that we have not made progress on that deal. And we can look to the policies being pushed by this administration that are directly undermining their ability to negotiate this deal. Those policies that are continuing to further regime change wars and regime change efforts in other countries like Venezuela and Iran that, that make it impossible for Kim Jong-un to believe them when they tell him, don't worry, get rid of your nuclear weapons. We're not going to come after so you. How would I really wish more politicians would make this point. I really like how she brought it to a bigger picture that the point is North Korea will never believe us if we say disarm and everything will be fine because that's exactly what we told Muammar Gaddafi and then we let people uh, stick a knife up his butt. So it's so incredibly important to remember that America is overthrowing small governments left and right. In the last 60 years, it averages out to almost one government per year. And they haven't forgotten it. In fact, I'm sure for these countries' point of view, it's one of their biggest fears is the U.S. overthrowing them. So if you're North Korea and you see the U.S. get the missiles back from Gaddafi and then invade him or pretend that there's weapons in Iraq, and then invade them or now economically starving Venezuela, causing even more just devastation to its people to make a point that it's a devastated place. And all the saber rattling that we've heard about uh, Iran and since, and this has been ratcheted up, since we have torn up the Iran deal. Now, back then, I was very worried that we were already going to be at war with Iran. I, what I didn't see coming was Europe apparently was like, hey, the U.S., what are you doing? We're going to stick with this deal. It's super important. It's super relevant. But, you know, you can only destroy your reputation worldwide so long before it catches up with you. They're you undermining their own credibility and the ability by changing our policies. This is not something that can happen overnight, but it begins with ending our regime change wars in other countries, ending our regime change efforts as we are seeing in these countries like Venezuela and Iran. He's looked shocked this entire interview. I just love watching his face. So that when we negotiate with, with North Korea, with Kim Jong-un, and we tell him that we will not come after you. We will not seek to topple your regime if you get rid of your nuclear weapons, understanding that this is why North Korea has nuclear weapons, as the only deterrent against regime change. Then we begin to have that credibility to be so able to have that agreement to achieve that objective of denuclearization. Basically, you're saying you would do what the administration is doing. You would be talking to Kim Jong-un, but you wouldn't do what they're doing in other places <laughs> so that you would send the right signal to Kim Jong-un. I'm just trying to get what you would do differently with North Korea. A smart man acting like one of the dumbest men in history. We expect no less from all mainstream media. Yeah, of course, of course. Look, 
Absolutely. I've served in Congress now for over six years and on the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committees. And under the Obama administration, I encourage them to have direct talks with North Korea to achieve this objective of denuclearization, encourage the Trump administration to do the same, and agreed when Trump decided to meet with Kim Jong-un. We must be willing to meet with those who may be potential adversaries or adversaries in the pursuit of peace and security. So yes, this is the correct move. However, this administration is undermining their own efforts by continuing to further these regime change uh, efforts and wars in other parts of the world, making it so they've got no credibility as they're trying to barter and negotiate with North Korea and get them to, to denuclearize. Okay, obviously the administration says it differently, trying to put the screws to some of these dictators that are doing bad things. But Brett, if everyone sees you apply the screws to everyone else, no one's gonna let themselves be put in a position where the screws can be applied, and the ultimate way to do that is nukes. Things I want to turn the topic. Uh, Ultimately, to they are trying to topple topple the dictators in these other countries, topple the leaders of these other countries, which is the point that I'm trying to make. All right, Congresswoman, which is they I, I want to turn to the. In good faith, make that point to Kim Jong Un. And there you have it—a very reasonable case for what happens when you do too many regime change words, like eating too many desserts for America. Eventually doesn't end well and in this case it's not desserts it's the world and it's not just the world it's the potential of global global thermal nuclear combat so congratulations Tulsi I really like those points this is something that I feel very closely tied to uh, how she's thinking about this this is so important that we have a more stable world with less threats of nukes less nukes in general and realize that the U.S. can't just do whatever it wants, and the U.S. isn't a policeman of the world. It's a thuggish organization that keeps people in line with economic, military, uh, political, and other types of power. And if we can get to a point where that's not the case, the U.S. is actually a good actor, people will trust us more, people will believe us more, and that's just a better planet. Guys, I'll see you on Saturday. Did you like that video? Are you not subscribed? Okay, you are now? Fantastic.